This is Share the Vision, presented by the Resource Center, a discussion of the programs and services of the Resource Center and about issues related to individuals with disabilities. It's going to be an exciting half hour because over the next 30 minutes we will shake, rumble, roll, and talk. Uh, I don't know about the shaking, rumbling, and rolling, but the talk part starts with Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director at the Resource Center. Good morning, Steve. Hi, Dennis. How are you? <laughs> I always pride myself on trying to be as clever as you when I introduce this program, but I always fall a little you, Oh, no. You're much more clever than I, and that was a great intro because we are here to talk about an event that's going to take place one week from today. It's our second annual Shake, Rumble, and Roll Motorcycle Poker Run. And we're hoping that a lot of our listeners have motorcycles and want to come out and join us because it'll be a great event. And to tell us more about Shake, Rumble, and Roll, joining us is Vicki Bardo, the Development and Events Manager at Filling the Gap, associated with the Resource Center. Hello, Vicki Bardo. Good morning, Dennis. And welcome back to Share the Vision. It's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Steve, describe the essence of Shake, Rumble, and Roll. What else do you want to add in terms of some of the essential understanding of what this second annual event is all about? Our second annual event is going to be held on June 1st, and we're going to be getting the run at Dunham Avenue, and we're going to take a beautiful scenic ride through Randolph, Ellicottville, Gowanda, and we're going to end up at the Sunset Bay Beach Club up in Irving, New York. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun, and hopefully we get a lot of participation and folks that want to come out and enjoy the ride. How does it work? And I understand that you do this as a fundraiser, so kind of integrate that part of it in, uh, Vicki. Remind right. us of uh, how it all comes together. Right. This is a fundraiser, and this is a relatively new event for us. This is only the second year we've done it. But the whole purpose behind it is that you get on a motorcycle, and you go to these different stops, and you draw a card. And you're trying to build uh, a poker hand. We're giving out prizes, cash prizes, I I might add, for the best five-card and the best three-card hands that you can make out of the cards that you draw at each of the draw stops. And is it uh, a certain entry fee to start? The entry fee is $20, and you can certainly show up that morning and sign in. You know, it's all weather dependent, and we understand that. So we have plenty of room for everyone to join in. Do you need two people on every motorcycle, or can somebody do it by themselves? Oh, no, you don't have to have a rider. We have plenty of folks coming single, you know, flying solo, and uh, a lot of people like to bring along a passenger. Now, you have done this one year previously. This is the second year. So give us a little uh, flavor, a little feel as to how the first year went. Last year was really surprising. We had kind of a slower upstart to the uh, pre-registration. And then the day of the event, it was great to see quite a few bikes lined up out back waiting to get in to register for the fun-filled day that we had planned for last year. And about how long does it take through the day? Uh, When does it start? When does it end? We are going to be taking off around 10 o'clock in the morning, and we anticipate getting up to the beach club at 2.30. That's the actual ride. We've also included a good hour to stop in Ellicottville for lunch, and the uh, victory party that we like to call will be starting at 2.30, And we have a fabulous band playing from 2.30 to 5.30 up at the Beach Club. So this is a real party at the end of it. It really is. You know, we celebrate the fact that we're bringing awareness to, certainly, to the programs and services that we offer and also provide a fun atmosphere and where people will stick around and mingle and and show them a good time and hopefully they'll come back next year and the year after that. And uh, you could handle how many? Is there a peak capacity? No. There is not. There is not. And anyone who knows, the Beach Club is huge. It's on Lake Erie, so we can park bikes just about anywhere. And uh, Kelly Borello is very excited to be hosting us up there. This is an event that would be ideal under sunny weather conditions. (laughs) But do you run regardless? We are going to run rain or shine. If it's a total washout, you know, hopefully it won't be. But we plan on running rain or shine. And the Folks who ride bikes, they understand that, and they have appropriate clothing. Some of the staff might not, but that's how it goes. Now, Vicki, I'm going to move into another segment of the show right now, and I want to have you help me do that. I (laughs) mentioned filling the gap associated with the Resource Center as I introduced you. Is that an adequate explanation of filling the gap? Well, filling the gap is an umbrella agency. We provide support for the financial part And we also house over here different corporations. 
and Jessica is part of that, which we're going to talk to her in a minute. Um, New Vision Services and Team Services, Support Enterprises, and there's a few others. But in general, it's kind of a huge corporation. I failed to mention as we began here that we are actually recording this show just a couple of days before broadcast at the Felice Corporate Center, Fairmont Avenue at 6th. People, hundreds of people, thousands maybe mm-hmm. drive by it all the time right near the 6th Street Bridge here in Jamestown. So when you mentioned this place or made reference to where we are, that's where we are. And thank you for connecting New Vision Services into this because that's where we're going to go next. Jessica Holmes is the Director of Community-Based Services at Filling the Gap. And Wendy Petoniak is the Service Coordinator for New Vision Services. First, Jessica, hello. Welcome back to Share the Vision. Very nice to see you again. Hello, Dennis. Nice to see you again, too. Tell me a little bit about your work as the Director of Community-Based Services and how that fits into Filling the Gap and New Vision Services. Well, I oversee New Vision Services and Team Services under the Umbrella Corporation Filling the Gap that Vicki had explained. So I oversee New Vision, which is a home care program primarily, and we, we work with folks who have traumatic brain injuries, and then Team Services, which is a Medicaid transportation service. And Wendy Petoniak, I think this is your first appearance on Share the Vision? It is. Thank you for having me this morning. Well, and thank you for joining us and willing to step up and talk about what it is to be the service coordinator at New Vision Services. What we're doing on Share the Vision today is starting with Shake, Rumble, and Rule, which is a week from today as this is broadcast, the big motorcycle event that Vicki Bardo and Steve Watterson explained so nicely to open the show. It benefits programs that you are directly involved with. Yes, I work specifically with adults with traumatic brain injuries as part of my responsibilities as a service coordinator for New Vision Services. We provide services to adults with traumatic brain injuries to be to live independently in the community as possible. Just to identify, again, the voice you're listening to, this is Wendy Petoniak. We want to keep them out of nursing homes and getting them in their own apartments or staying in their own homes. I assist them with financially how are they able to get the resources to do that. For example, do they have Medicaid? Do they have Medicare? Connect them with food stamps. Help them with budgeting. If they need PCA care or home care staff in that home, I help write the plans to make sure they have those services available. What is traumatic brain injury as you understand it, and how does it change your life to put a person in the position of needing the kind of help that you offer? Well, a traumatic brain injury is a sudden injury. It's something that happens either if they have a medical issues, say a stroke, or they're in a a car accident, something like that. And what's difficult is that it's a sudden change in somebody's life. We want to make sure that they can get back to as as much independence as they had before. The kind of services that you provide, are they on a day-to-day basis, or would this be something that uh, is just occasional? Uh, Um, It's dependent on the person, really. A lot of the people we service with New Vision Services do need 24-7, but there are some that don't need daily services. Some people need daily staffing. Some people may need staffing only a couple days a week. Some people may just need my service coordination where I make sure their benefits are in place and that they can continue to get services provided by Medicaid. If we were to try and draw a picture in the mind of the listener of someone who has traumatic brain injury, it sounds like from what you said it could be someone of almost any age, someone male or female, uh, anyone could have a, a kind of sudden incident or accident that, that creates this change in their lives? Absolutely. Our agency focuses on adults, so anyone over 18. But yeah, it can happen to anyone, any age. I mean, we have we have young adults who receive services from us, but we've had people in their 70s who receive services. So it really is a wide gamut of who can have a traumatic brain injury, who was affected, and how they're affected. And are there... Uh, numbers, uh, a lot of people who that, that you serve. Uh, uh, can you give us some ideas to how many people you're helping? I currently have a caseload, probably around 10 people or so, but there are really dozens and dozens in the community served by other agencies. Even in the Buffalo area, I mean, there's probably hundreds at least. It's hard to give a good number on that, but it's more you wouldn't if you have, if you know somebody with a traumatic brain injury you may not necessarily look at them and say oh they have hey they have one so it's very hard to tell 
But, I mean, I think more people are affected than people realize. I'm going to have Jessica swing back in here for a moment. Uh, now that uh, Wendy has so nicely described the effects of traumatic brain injury on a person and uh, the kind of services that you provide, anything that you want to add in terms of your perspective on what you offer to people and how they respond to it and how effective it is? Sure. Wendy primarily, as she said, focuses on the service coordination portion. And that is the primary service that we provide to people with traumatic brain injuries. But there's also four other services that we provide to them. We have home and community support services, which is a PCA service. And that is the big one that a lot of people really need to be able to stay in their homes. They need that, like she said, either daily, a couple of times a week. Some people do need the 24-7 care because they're not safe to be home alone. It's a really wa- a wide range of needs based on the person, the individual themselves. So that's, like I said, the main service that they receive. And uh, then You used a term that I wanted, PCA? That is personal care aid. We mm-hmm. get stuck in these acronyms and we just they just roll <laughs> off our tongues. We don't yeah. really <laughs> think well, about it. But Personal care aid. Right, okay. yes. And that's, that's a direct care staff who goes directly into the person's home and helps them with daily tax, tasks. Maybe they need help bathing or they need help grocery shopping or mm-hmm. cleaning their apartment, those types of things. Okay, that was one thing. You were going to move on to some others before I stopped you. Yes, and then we have an ILST service, which stands for Independent Learning Skills Development Training. If I can get that right. And that's a service to assist somebody in relearning a skill that they may have lost due to their injury. So maybe they were really good at cooking or they were great at at paying their own bills and budgeting, but those skills come very difficult to them now. So they get a a staff in there for a few hours a week to help them relearn that skill Mm -hmm. to regain some of that independence. And then we also have a behavior service and a counseling service, which are more temporary type services that help people adjust to their new abilities or disabilities after their accident. Let me ask both of you, uh, Jessica Holmes and Wendy Petoniak, do you get over a traumatic brain injury, or is it something that once it occurs, it is just something that you deal with for the remainder of your life? It can vary by the person. Some people recover very, very well, and they regain all of their skills back, and you may never know that they had an injury, while other people are severely affected for the rest of their lives. So it's really kind of case-by-case dependent. We have... uh One other person who's going to join us on the air here today, and I'm going to ask uh, Vicki Bardo to uh, change places with him so that we can bring him to the air right now. And uh, I'm going to leave the microphones open for Jessica Holmes and Wendy Petoniak as well to kind of support this uh, interview and uh, our coming to know a man named Ben. Hello, Ben. Good morning. How are you today? Okay. It's very nice to have an opportunity to speak with you on the uh, air here today. And uh, Ben, I understand that you volunteered to come in and talk to us today because you have some experience with this program. Yes. Tell us a little bit of your life story uh, and that which you are comfortable speaking to us about in the room and on the radio. My life story. How did you come to need services from New Vision Services? Hmm. Did you have a traumatic brain injury at some point in your life? Um, Well, I look at mine as more self-inflicted, the use of a lot of drugs and stuff. And that was at some point when you were younger? Yes. How are you today, Ben? I'm doing good. What kind of help have you received from... I I get aid service, and Wendy here helps me. How do you... Do they help you? Can you tell us sort of on a day-to-day basis what they do? Well, she does all, like, the paperwork and stuff, and she helps me with my finances. And the aides help me with doing the cleaning and that type of stuff, shopping. These services are pretty essential to your life. It'd be hard to get along without them? Almost impossible, I think. Really? How did you come to find out about New Vision Services, Ben, did someone direct you here? That I don't remember. Um, but you found yourself here at some point recently, or was this some time? Well, I was with them a while back ago. Um, then I chose to come back here. So you made a decision to uh, access the services a second time or get get them again, is what you're saying? Today. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the future look like for you now, uh, Ben? Do you think about that and what you would like to be able to accomplish with your life? 
Well, right now, in this particular moment in my life, I think things look rosy. Good for you. What uh, leads you to say that they're looking rosy? Are there particular incidents or people or uh, aspirations? Tell me about that. Well, we, it's like I'm going to Warner Place. It's an adult they have, and it's, um, you know, it gets me out in the community making friends and that type of stuff instead of just sitting at home. And that's on the Lutheran campus, as I understand it. Yes. And uh, do you go there every day? Three days a week. And what sort of things do you do when you uh, are there, Ben? Harass as many people as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of know the crowd and, and know how to have fun with them. Right? Yes, I like to tease all the staff. And, so, yes. and that's part of what gives you the rosy outlook on the, on the future. Yes, from my home, I can only harass myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good reason to get out in the public then <laughs> from time to time. Well, I appreciate your sense of humor, uh, Ben. Is there anything else that you would like to say uh, uh, about your life and how things are, are going with you or other things you might like to do in the future? Hmm. Well, right now I'm trying to, uh, through music therapy, learn to like play a penny whistle. And that's going to be challenging. You didn't happen to bring one with you, did you? No. no. I would give you the opportunity if you wanted to try and, you know, make a nice sound on the radio show here. <laughs> it wouldn't be a nice sound right now. <laughs> what made you pick the penny whistle, then? Well, because my son had, had, had one from Ireland. Oh, so you had access to a penny whistle. That mm -hmm. uh, question came afar from uh, Steve Watterson, who's uh, a little off microphone, but wanted to get that in there. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Watterson? No, I'm good for now. Okay. I just wanted to give you give you the chance. Well, Ben, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you on the show here today. It's been a real uh, honor and pleasure for us to meet you, and we wish you the best of luck uh, in your life at Warner Place, and if you ever want to do a penny whistle solo on the air, we'll set this back up for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Now, uh, as I said, uh, Jessica and Wendy are going to stay on during the time that uh, Ben was on here. Comment uh, anything that you want to say, uh, Wendy, in particular, or Jessica, about uh, the work that you've done with Ben and how the coordination of services has uh, helped him progress in his life? I think in general, the, the services, New Vision Services provides, it's a step up for people. You know, they're getting out of the nursing homes. They can, be, they can direct their own services. That's something they wouldn't normally get to do. This is Wendy Petoniak speaking here. And that's a big push, especially for people who have different abilities. They need to be able to have that opportunity. So for people like Ben to be able to live in his own home and to be able to access the community, to access the resources they need to live independently, like the Shake Rumble World, it's really important that we get these funds to continue to do that for these folks. What you suggest and what you say, uh, Wendy, is that uh, we're not these services uh, that were kind of run-out services that you can take to different places in the community available uh, many of the people with traumatic brain injury uh, would be in nursing homes or someplace which would be more confining than they actually need. Absolutely. How did you come to be a part of this work, uh, Wendy? I moved to Jamestown a few years ago. I was a service coordinator out in Rochester. And then I heard, I actually found about New Vision Services through the Resource Center. So I contacted Jessica and <laughs> asked if she was hiring a service coordinator, and I found out about the program. And I didn't know much when I first started, but now that I've, I've been here about three years, it's the most rewarding service coordination job I've had. Unlike a lot of care coordinators, I'm very hands-on. I do a lot for folks. They've kinda, they kind of become your family. You know, you learn about, a lot about them. You learn about their stories. And it just makes me want to do that much more for them. What are the rewards otherwise personally to you? It sounds like something has happened inside you, uh, Wendy Petoniak, doing this work. Well, I have a, have a brother who has a disability and lives in a group home. So to be able to help people live independently in the community, my first case, I brought a gentleman out of the nursing home back to his apartment. And just to see him thrive, his personality has really come out. Medically, he's doing great. He seems happy. His language has increased just seeing physically just seeing the transformation of people when they get the choice to live as independently as they can is all the reward i need really well, the other thing that comes to my mind and and we're going to go back to Stephen and vicky the hour half hours getting away from us very quickly here as it often does on share the vision but 
what you suggest and what you say is that when people who have had life-changing incidents, such as traumatic brain injury or similar, to see these vistas open up for them again is something that is really very exciting, stimulating, and giving them something back that they probably did never thought that they would lose in the first place, and now the door is reopened to them. Absolutely. I, you know, when someone has something like a traumatic brain injury, it's a lot of people focus on the medical and what's happening right then and there. But what does their future look like? And they'd be able to have the resources to help people like Ben or other people with traumatic brain injuries to realize that, you no, know, there is going to be life after this injury, that I can plan a future and I can have certain things. I can have a pet. I can go out in the community. I can go to shake, rumble, and roll and, you know, just live the life they wanted to live, live the life they had before. Wendy Petoniak is the service coordinator for New Vision Services, and you've been very, very descriptive and effective in your presentation on Share the Vision today. As I mentioned earlier, your first time on the show. Uh, thank you very much, and we hope you get the opportunity to speak with you again. Thank you for having me. I'm going to have you switch places with Steve Watterson, and uh, I'll have Jessica Holmes do the transition with me here as Vicki Bardo comes back to the microphone as well. Uh, in, anything further before we recast for the audience who may not have been with us at the beginning what Shake, Rumble, and Roll is all about? But uh, first, anything else on the program just to kind of tie all this up, Jessica? Well, I think it's just it's a really important program that we have here, and you don't really think about it on a day-to-day basis, but a brain injury can happen to any one of us as we walk out the door later today. I mean, it's something that, like Wendy said, is very sudden, unexpected, and can happen to anybody no matter age, race, ethnicity, sex, you know, it can happen to anybody. So we just want to kind of keep that in the back of our minds and remember that these folks are, they have families and loved ones and they just want what's best for them. So if we can keep them in the community, keep their independence for them and, and give them the best quality of life they can have, then that's the best Kind of makes you want to wear a helmet all the time and stay <laughs> off. Well, not that it's at this season of the year, and I don't have to worry about the ice, but stay off ice yeah. at all times. But, uh, Jessica, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Vicki Bardo is back. She is the, the Development and Events Manager here at Filling the Gap, along with Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director at the Resource Center. First, uh, after all, all this wonderful description of the benefits of Shake, Rumble, and Roll, the event one more time is a week from today, just to sort of give us the short paragraph on that. Uh, yes, come on out. We still have plenty of spots available, and it's going to be a fabulous day. I've ordered great weather. It's $20 to register per person. Now, that's also for your rider. So if you're coming with your bike and you're driving the bike, then your rider's also 20 bucks. So, you know, it's going to be a great day. We have a fabulous band that's going to be entertaining us and just a pretty ride, and we're going to have a lot of fun. You said earlier on the program that many people registered the day of when you did the first of these events last year, but if they want to pre-register, is that is there that opportunity, and how would they do so? They can register until 5 o'clock on Thursday before the event. And they would do that... By calling you or going to a website? Yep, they need to go to our website, which is www.fillingthegap.net. Or they can always give me a call, 661-1477. Fillingthegap.net or 661-1477. Now, Steve, Vicki, reflections on what you heard about the benefit, the, the money that is raised through Shake, Rumble, and Roll, and how it helps the program that uh, was so uh, wonderfully described for us by uh, all of the other guests, uh, Ben, uh, Wendy, and Jessica here. Oh, it's great. I, you know, I think um, obviously the community is very familiar with the resource center and the services we provide, but maybe not as familiar with new vision services and uh, the supports that they offer. So to have uh, Wendy and Jessica here to describe what new vision services offers to people with TBI and then uh, to have Ben here and talk a little bit about how he has benefited from the services he gets, I think is very important. So the money that comes in from Shake, Rumble, and Roll will be used to support those services as well as to support uh, some of the services that the Resource Center provides to people with post-traumatic stress disorder as well. And that is a whole other subject that we do not have time to get into in the remaining minutes of this program today, but I would bet equally as challenging as traumatic uh, brain injury, though probably caused, perhaps caused for the same uh, sort of event, uh, uh, but we often hear about PTSD from those who have uh, come back from service abroad, uh, for example, and uh, I would suspect that that is uh, equally as daunting. Yeah, and I think, you know, PTSD can certainly people get that from experiences from war, death in the family, uh, physical assault, 
other injuries. So uh, it's another one of those uh, silent disabilities that you know you look at somebody may not be able to tell that they have it, and to be able to provide supports to the people that need it is obviously very important. Shake, rumble, and roll is one week from today. Additional information: fillingthegap.net or six six one one four seven seven to correct connect directly with Vicki Bardo. Steve, we have a minute remaining. If there's anything else related to the Resource Center as we get into this uh, warm time of the year that uh, you would like to say? To well, the, uh, we'll put out a plug much like uh, <laughs> dozens of other uh, organizations are doing. We've got Give Big Chautauqua taking place on Thursday, June 13th, where nonprofit organizations throughout Chautauqua County will be trying to raise online donations. The Resource Center and Filling the Gap are partnering to raise money for our Dream On Kathy Seastead Memorial Fund, which uh, supports people with disabilities who have urgent needs. And um, so we'll, if those who are considering making a donation on uh, Thursday the 13th, please consider sending some money our way. So I, I just want to say as we wrap this up, because you did not go this direction, but I will. I was uh, unloading the microphones and everything to bring into the Felice Corporate Center where we're recording Share the Vision today. And I was bending over in the car in one of those situations in which somebody honked the horn loudly <laughs> immediately next to me. And then I jerked my head up, and after getting a small traumatic brain injury of my own mm -hmm. on the car, there were Wayne and Elaine <laughs> hoteling which made me think immediately there will be a Laurel Run this year. Oh, absolutely, yep. Our 23rd annual Laurel Run will take place July 19th and 20th, and we'll certainly do a radio show about that between now and then, and there will be opportunities for the community to support that event as well. As I begin to think about the back of my head, maybe I'll need some new vision services. That's just, well, probably not. But anyway, thank you. <laughs> we start facetious and end facetious and try to get serious a little bit. In the middle. That's how Share the Vision <laughs> runs sometimes. It has been my pleasure and honor to present this program from the Police Corporate Center today with Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director at the Resource Center, our special guest, Ben, Vicki Bardo, Development and Events Manager at Filling the Gap, Jessica Holmes, the Director of Community-Based Services at Filling the Gap, and Wendy Petoniak, Service Coordinator for New Vision Services. Thank you all for sharing the vision today.